So it's PCOS Awareness Month, which stands for Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. And PCOS is a condition that affects one in 10 women caused by an imbalance of reproductive hormones. And that can lead to missed or irregular periods, which lead to the development of cysts in the ovaries or reduced infertility. And there are so many other symptoms that go along with it as well, which I'm sure we'll get into. So what symptoms did you get and how did you get diagnosed with PCOS? Well, the worst thing that I did was because I was on the contraception pill for so long, I didn't, it masked all the symptoms I had of polycystic ovaries. Um, and it was only when I came off the pill, um, which was over a year ago, and then all of a sudden my periods didn't come back. So they obviously say that a symptom of polycystic ovaries is, is very irregular periods or sometimes missing periods. Um, and that, so I went on the pill really early, like when I was like 15, 16. So I can't even remember what they were like back then. But to suddenly have none after years of having that fake one on the pill, it was like, oh, like, where are they? Why don't I have them? Um, and obviously I've have always had acne. I've had acne for years and years and years. So it what did play on my mind do I have polycystic ovaries? But when I had brought it up to the doctors before, they always stick with the same, the same kind of stereotype. Are you obese? Do you have really greasy skin? And do you have like excessive hair on your skin and body? Which I didn't fall into. Um, so it was only when they were really concerned because it is quite health worry. If you've not had periods for a year, they were, they were concerned, which led to them doing the scans, which did show that I did, did have a lot of cysts on my ovaries and it was polycystic, uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. So that was how I found out. Um, again, like I'm, I'm not a massive fan of, of the pill. Like I wouldn't really recommend it to people because obviously it did, it masked that I had it, but that was really the, the only way that I found out that I did. And if I was still on the pill today, I probably would still not know that I had it. Yeah, that was exactly the same with me. I was on the pill for years and obviously that was giving me regular periods. And then as soon as I yeah. came off it, that just completely stopped. And then all of the symptoms kind of came. But as you were saying, the first thing they say is that, are you obese? And are you yeah. growing hair? And a lot of people don't yeah. get that. Um, and it just seems like the easy option is just to then put you back on the pill, but that's not treating it. And there is a yeah. piece for us anyway, but there are ways to manage your symptoms. So what did you do to manage yours? Well, like you said, he, they said to me, look, if you're not having periods, the best thing we need to do is put you back on the pill. And I just thought that was the most absurd thing I've ever heard, especially because I'd said that I would like the chance to have, have children. And they, they was like, well, it's more important that your body's bleeding, so you need to go back on the pill. It's just, I just still can't get my head around the fact that that was the advice I was given. Um, so that it was absolutely not an option. Um, it, I was very lucky because just when I got diagnosed, because it all took so long for the whole process to happen, I then started doing my own research and, and saw that there, there is a P, PCOS diet that you can do, which is obviously putting a lot of goodness into your body and um, to control the extent of PCOS. And I was also recommended to take, now I can't pronounce it, in, in this insulta, what, what is it pronounced? Yeah, I can't say it either. In a, in a subtle? In a subtle, yeah, something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean. Um, so I ordered that and I ordered a book, which was a PCOS diet. Um, and I started them for about a month and then, um, I got pregnant and my period still hadn't come back but obviously somewhere within that time frame I must have ovulated because the doctor said to me your PCOS is bad and you're not ovulating that's why you're not bleeding there's just no ovulation so we'll have to get you to see a specialist and you'll have to go on specialist medication but then lockdown happened so all my specialist appointments were cancelled so that's when I was like right I'll take this powder I'll get on this diet but, and then magically I just fell pregnant so obviously so how long were you doing that diet and taking the supplements 
before this happened? Not long. Yeah, not long to be honest. I got I got diagnosed with PCOS in the January, so I started then, and then I got pregnant um, in the April. So not very long. Yeah, that's so good. And what would you say are some myths? Because obviously one of the myths is infertility, but you've proven that wrong mm. now pregnant and maybe it is definitely definitely harder for people to get pregnant but there are another other few myths around it as well so would you like to share those and um, i would just say that obviously like you say about the infertility that is definitely the main main one um and the fact that they also said that i wasn't ovulating um and I wasn't going to ovulate unless I was put on Clomid or another, it was like another drug that would kickstart fake periods. But and they said that they confirmed this in March and obviously there was something happening because I got pregnant in April. So I think to say to someone that you're not ovulating is a really strong statement. And if you are told that, like it's not necessary. And sometimes when I looked into it, you can ovulate and not have periods. I don't know how that happens, but it is possible that you can be ovulating, but your body just isn't releasing the bleed. So there's something there. So I think if you are told that you don't ovulate, don't necessarily think of it as facts. There is some, your body could be doing something. It just might need a little bit of, of, of time or kickstart in some way. Um, and yeah, just also the, the other myths about, um, that your body has a really sluggish uh, metabolism and you'll be obese and you'll have really greasy skin and you need to keep on top of that and it's all um, created from polycystic ovaries. I've never been obese, if anything, I've always been slightly on the underweight side um, and I just think it's important that people don't listen to those myths and think that they don't fall under that category because I probably did and I probably felt a bit silly mentioning it to doctors at first because they would just say you're not the stereotypical type person but it doesn't matter because everybody everybody's got ovaries and if you have polycystic ovaries it doesn't mean doesn't i mean there might be a few traits i get obviously they've got they've gone off some stats somewhere that has shown that but don't just rely on that and think that it's it, you know it's not you because you you might be slim or have dry skin it can affect a lot of people um and other than that I, i'd say i've been quite good i don't I, there's not really any other myths, but I think it's because I only found out in January. And I feel like I've not had that long really to get my head around the fact that I have it. Yeah, and for someone who found out that they had it a long time ago, and they've actually been battling with it for a longer time. So, for example, I think I found out in January as well, actually. Yeah. Um, and it actually took me quite a long time to even know what to do because I saw a few different health professionals and actually some of them were really unhelpful and I came out feeling totally overwhelmed because they said things like, you, you're young, you don't need to come back until you actually want to get pregnant or go back on the pill and I was like, similar to you. Um, yeah. She didn't want to do that because I didn't get on well with the pill. And they basically said that metformin is yeah. an option that you can go down. But then again, there are so many different things that you can do before that. And that isn't a drug that everyone just wants to go on because there are side effects to that as well. And it's better to treat it naturally. So for someone who's been on this journey for a while and is probably getting quite frustrated, do you have mm -hmm. any advice for them? Because obviously you're a really successful case of it. Yeah, I, I do. I do feel really successful with it, and I don't know if it's a jinx or I don't know if it just naturally would have happened like that. But I do feel lucky with how things have turned out, and um, I just want people not to feel like they only have one route to go down, because that was only, only the ever the route that I was told was you need to see a specialist and they need to put you on Clomid, and if that doesn't work, then it'd be metformin. Um, we need to get that fake bleed. Um, I think if you've not had a period for a year, it, as scary as it sounds, it's not necessarily meaning, oh my God, you've got to go on all these drugs that give all these fake bleeds. And it is different because I did say that I, want, I was trying for a baby, so I feel like they, they might have felt they had no other answer for me. But 
just from speaking to people who have polycystic ovaries, so many people have said about how diet and lifestyle can really keep it in check and it can massively help. Um, the powder I mentioned before in, in a satil or however it's pronounced, people have swore by that, which is what led for me to try it. I don't personally believe I, I was on it long enough to be a good case study for it. But I think if you were to combine that with healthy eating, and just being aware of the foods that you're eating and the ingredients that you're cooking, your vitamin intake and um, your stress levels, I think that there's a lot of ways that you can control it yourself naturally before going down that route. And just to be aware, because the, it just angers me so much about the stress about go back on the pill, put artificial hormones in your body so you have that bleed. It's a fake bleed at the end of the day, so it's still not doing you any good. So I just think people need to not, not if you do have polycystic ovaries, just stay away from the pill. And like I keep saying, I'm not obviously not a doctor or a health profession. So I feel like I can't really say, but it is the only advice I would really stress is to just keep away from the pill because it will just mask it and make it worse. Obviously, it helps when you are younger. It is supposed to help the symptoms. But as soon as you come off it, they just come back. So it's worth looking at, at living with PCOS and managing it via the more natural ways. Yeah, absolutely agree. And like you said, it is just masking it. So it's going to seem yeah. like it's all fine, but then as soon as you come off, it's just going to be a million times worse. And exactly. actually, that time to really get to the root and treat it when you were younger. But thank you so much for sharing your story. And no so many listeners will be really interested especially as it is PCOS Awareness Month and unfortunately a lot of people aren't as successful as you and are probably really feeling quite rock bottom with it but I'm sure yeah. hearing some stories like that will give them that extra bit of hope to actually really try and carry on with their journey. Yeah definitely. I